Hey, good morning, uh, Lighthouse London Church. Lovely to uh, be with you today and uh, happy 21. And uh, I declare that it, this is going to be, we're going to see the joy of the Lord this year. And um, even uh, beyond this, uh, uh, these uh, restrictions, we just declare that the our Lord is with us and he loves us and we're going to worship him now and just enjoy uh, pressing into the presence of the living God. So we just, uh, Father, we just pray your spirit would come upon each of us watching now, upon our homes, upon our households. And uh, your Lord, you'd lift us into uh, heavenly places, into the presence of the living God and the living Jesus. We bless you. Amen.
surface Bowing here I find my wrist Without you I fall apart You're the one That guides my heart Lord, I come I confess Bowing here I find my rest Without
So, Father, as we have worshipped you, as we've turned our eyes towards you this morning, we bless you and uh, we look to you, Lord, afresh. For our families, we pray for peace in our homes. We pray peace upon the world. We pray for inspiration and fresh anointing, Lord. And uh, we particularly lift up to you the United States of America at this time. We pray for the President-elect, for President-elect Biden, Kamala Harris, for all their team as they take over the reins of leading that great nation. And we pray, Lord Jesus, for wisdom. We pray for peace. We pray for your blessing upon the churches to be agents of your grace and your peace and reconciliation. Do remember all those who are entering this year as printed prisoners of conscience or prisoners of politics around the world. And we pray for them. We remember them this morning. And we bless you, Lord, that you've made us agents of reconciliation. Strengthen us today in Jesus' name. Well, welcome again. Um, uh, for those of you who missed the welcome at the beginning, it's lovely to see you. Happy New Year. And we are going to have a message in a moment. I'm going to give you, uh, we're going to look at the Word of God and message that the Lord laid in my heart this week. Um, um, but first of all, let's just uh, have a few uh, news items and then we'll come back in a few moments. The, uh, the Word of God together now, and um, and and um, this is the time of year. I often, you know, if you're for those of you who read Bible the Bible each year through, um, you know, this is the this is you get back to Genesis, and and I wanted to talk today. I th- kind of it, it, inevitably after you come through Christmas, however that's been for you in the last. Um, uh, I hope you've had a, a you know a rest time and you've you've been blessed um, and you've been able to connect whether physically with your family with you or through the amazing technology that we've been using um, whichever but um, it, it it is a reconnecting time isn't it and 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 I felt I really felt in my heart today um, the Lord say that this is a time to reactivate it's a kind of activation season. And I'll explain what that means in a, in a bit. Um, but it's kind of a reactivation of our spiritual life, of our spiritual beings. And um, and and um, and I love the fact that in, you know, when you get to Genesis, you get back and you get back to the essentials. You get back to remembering who we are, where we come from, and where we're going. And um, and I find that just uh, just really. Uh, 
changes things. It, it, it brings a shift. And, and, and I know the Lord wants to do a new thing in my life each year. Um, the, that my time is his time. I have no freehold on my existence on this earth. I'm a tenant and he's with me and he is now and he is uh, tomorrow. So, so um, um, I'm in his hands and so I want to be aware of my origins. And uh, so I love to look at this ancient book um, and uh, to think about where I came from. And um, so I'm going to read you just, um, I particularly wanted to, I felt highlight, the Lord highlighting the story of Noah to me. Um, and I'm not going to go into it in great detail, but I just thought I'd read a bit from uh, chapter 7 and 8, beginning of chapter 8. So you know the story that, uh, that this is kind of a, the Lord is doing a reset on the earth. And, um, you know, the, the flood comes, um, but before that, he's, he's seen Noah, uh, and he calls him a righteous man. And I think that means that, 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 that Noah had the heart of the father, and the, 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 father, he, the, the father was who he looked to for his life, and it, in the way that he did life. And, um, and, 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 and so he, he chose Noah. And the Old Testament, you see all the time, you see these stories that, 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 that God is looking for the righteous heart, the righteous one, because it's, it's, we've not yet been made righteous through the sacrifice of Jesus, of the Son, um, which makes each one of us righteous in his sight. As we, you know, but that's the gospel. So let's just see this choosing. So he chooses Noah and uh, and uh, sets him aside and, and says bring your families and bring the animals bring bring uh the seven of the clean and the two of the pairs of the uh, so-called unclean animals I don't want to get into that um uh, but um and so they're all crowded together on this boat and um and uh, this is where we pick the story up in verse 17 it says for 40 days the flood kept coming on the earth um as, and as the waters increased they lifted the ark high above the earth. The waters rose and increased greatly on the earth, and the ark floated on the surface of the water. They rose uh, uh, greatly on the earth, and all the high mountains under the entire heavens were covered. The waters rose, you're getting a sense, the waters are rising, and covered the mountains to a depth of more than 15 cubits, um, which I understand is about uh, seven or eight meters. It's like nearly 30 feet above the top of Everest. Um, you can't imagine. Every living thing that moved on land perished. Birds, livestock, wild animals, all the creatures that swarm over the earth and all mankind. Everything on dry land that had the breath of life in its nostrils died. Every living thing on the face of the earth was wiped out. People and animals and uh, the creatures that moved along the earth and the birds were wiped from the earth. Only Noah was left and those with him in the ark. And the waters flooded the earth for 150 days. 8.1 says, but, but, but God remembered Noah and all the wild animals and the livestock that were with him in the ark. He remembered them, he sent a wind over the earth and the waters receded. So we're gonna pick that story up in a moment, but just, just going back to our origins, it says, doesn't it, it says in the book, the, the, the word Genesis means, the Greek, it's a Greek word, it means in the beginning, the Hebrew word um, Bereshit, and uh, it means in the beginning, God created. The, the book tells an incredible pace, uh, the first thousands of years of creation. It tells about the three persons of the Godhead um, being involved. Let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness. The Spirit of God hovers over the earth. The Spirit breathes life into the first people uh, in accordance with the intention of the Father. We were intended and Genesis is all about the creation power of the living God, the living and loving God. It's about the battle that he has to implant humanity into the world to reclaim it from darkness. 
because we know there is darkness there. The world is uh, in a state of chaos and the spirit brings order out of chaos, brings life where there has been no life. And we were intended, humanity is intended by the living God, the same God that we know today. This is our origins. And early on we see the dysfunction and the impact of the evil which still exists in the land. And we see you know, the story, the killing starts, Cain kills Abel and so on. And, um, and then there's this, this strange wiping out, there's this strange reset as Noah chooses, as, Noah, as, as God chooses a righteous man. And, um, and, 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 and everything, everything is rubbed out. Everything is rubbed out. And they're confined on this boat for 150 days, and around nearly six months. And he's there and he's got his... He's got his family, he's got his children, he's got his, his daughters-in-law and his, and his sons-in-law and he's got his grandchildren and he's got this crazy menagerie of creatures. Um, and and uh, there's only one window which he makes later on uh, for a bird to fly out from. And what would they have felt? Disruption, loss, sadness, deep sadness grieving they're wet and cold and there's rain and there's rain and the waters rise and rise cramped together animal poo bird droppings there's no place to walk noisy kids maybe some of this maybe some of this is resonating a bit as we are in this weird time you know uh, we can see the light at the end of the tunnel um Noah didn't know how long it was going to go on for. It was only when the, when the rain stopped. He didn't know how long it was going to take for the waters to recede. And then it says in chapter 8, but God remembered. God remembered Noah. And he remembered, he remembered his promise. And we're here because we're remembered. The Father remembers us. Remembers us. We're from his origins. And we're intended by him and jesus is there the spirit is there in the beginning and um, we are from this creator so don't worry about what you're missing out now time is not the issue um it's his time there'll be time there'll be time for things to catch up there'll be time it's his time It says in uh, Philippians, don't be anxious about anything. That doesn't mean not to be anxious about anything but one thing. It says, don't be anxious about anything. This is a time to remember our origins, to recall where we came from. And it's a time of creativity. Our God is always at work to this day, Jesus says. And he goes on creating. And, 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 and we are made in his image, uh, Genesis 1, 26 to 28. We're made in his image, in his likeness. We have that creative urge in us. There may be parts of the picture of our lives that, that, that need to be rubbed out. Thinking about that, you know, what often happens physically in the Old Testament is, is a spiritual message for us in the age of Jesus. So are there parts of your life which uh, need to be rubbed out, um, laid, you know, laid aside, dealt with removed parts not to carry forward what is to be carried forward is his love our lives are so intense our, you know we we go along at a pace a bit like genesis that book goes along and 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 and, and just we need to recall what is important to him Re- recall creativity recall our giftings recall the inv- importance of the environment I think about Noah, what would he have learned in that, in that boat? He didn't have access to online courses and goodness knows what else. He didn't have the distractions of books and TV. I guess, I think he probably became a great vet. They must have known everything there is to know about animals. I mean, they would certainly have known all about how to identify how animals were doing according from their, their droppings and all that stuff. I remember I went <laughs> on a safari one time and that was uh, the whole thing about animal droppings is really important. But anyway, that's about the extent of my, of my knowledge. Um, but be open, be open to um, 
the creativity of the spirit and maybe there's a there's a readying that's going on um and uh don't be anxious um look out for new learning new opportunities um and new dreams so i think this is a this is a kind of time when we recall our origins but we also it's always good isn't it at this time of the year you know just as we as we uh it's, it's, as the, we have gone through the equinox so the light the days are getting lighter and uh, we need to be heading in the right direction and we, we have to redirect our lives redirect our lives towards the living Jesus and whatever else we may be thinking whatever else I may be thinking I want my life my life direction to be towards the son of God who loved me and gave himself for me he's my foundation I'm spiritual kin with him through the Holy Spirit he is my Alpha and my Omega and um, my life is not about material gain or comfort ultimately I have to be a disciple for now and beyond and this isn't about being crazy or obsessed but there is no other God so I can't have any other head over my life there isn't another God there's no one higher I can account to a bishop but my Lord is always Jesus. And he's rubbed out the past. He's rubbed out the wrongs of my past. And he shows me where I'm headed. I love the fact it says in, um, it, 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 Jesus says, you know, before Abraham was, I am. And um, I love that part. And, you know, we need to realise that Jesus always has been. And yet he is so with us and so close to us. Micah 5, which we sometimes read around Christmas, he says, You, Bethlehem, Ephrathah, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from of old, from ancient times. Jesus is the I am. He was before time. He is after time. We see Jesus in the, in the scriptures. We see in the New Testament scriptures, we see the incarnation years. But this is kind of like the tip of the iceberg of the third person of God. You know, you know, you say that like an iceberg has two thirds underwater. We only see the, the third above the water. And I think it's a bit like that with Jesus. We only see, but we see all we have. You know, we lack nothing. We lack no good thing in Jesus. We're not in a time of lack. We're, in a, we're always in a time of fullness with him. We're always in a time of moving forward. And we see his three amazing, uh, creative, miraculous years. Um, and, and they show us all that we need to know. So at this time, consume the word of God. Remember his body and his blood. Be consuming Jesus at this time. And remember that he is, he, he, is, he is man, but he is fully in the spirit. And with the spirit, he shows us how we can live our lives as he does. How he sees, how he acts and what he does. And I was looking about, um, I, I, was, I was dipping into Luke's gospel on this. And just seeing how the spirit is, 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 is affecting the intention of the father for the son so the the spirit the spirit prophesies through zechariah over the son the spirit the spirit overshadows the mother of god mary and and he is conceived by the spirit and the spirit comes upon the son to empower him at his baptism luke chapter 3 you know the stories and the, the, the spirit, he, he stands up, doesn't he? In, 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 in Luke chapter 4, we read uh, verse 18, how, how he stands up and declares the spirit of the Lord is upon me. To declare, to declare the year of the Lord's favour. I love that. The year of the Lord's favour. The spirit, where Jesus, where Jesus is, the Lord's favour is. And it's through the spirit that this becomes a reality. The proclaiming of freedom for the prisoners, the recovery of sight for the blind, the good news to the poor. And we'll talk about how we can, how we can be agents um, in just in a moment on, on, towards all the ministries that Jesus shows us. In Luke, we see that the spirit activity, unlike it so much in John, where John refers directly to the spirit, often 
uh, Luke does, but not so much. He also talks about the power. He talks about the power. Where, where it mentions the power um, um, of Jesus in ministry, it, it's referencing the power of the Holy Spirit, the word for dunamis. So you see in Luke 9.45 where, where, the, where the woman touches his robe and he says, Who touched me? I know that power has gone out from me. And it's, it's the power. It's the power of the Spirit at work. And it's the same power, it says in, in, in chapter 9, it says uh, where he, um, he sends out his, um, his, his 12. He sends them out um, to, and he, gave them, he gives them power and authority to drive out demons. What he's doing is he's imparting the Holy Spirit to them because it's before the age of the Spirit, um, um, which comes, uh, 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 we read about in Acts chapter 2. And, 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 and he sends them out to, to, to drive out demons, to cure diseases, to, to, to heal the sick, to preach the good news of the kingdom. And, and, and we know how they come back and they say, even the demons submit. And Jesus, it says, is full of joy, full of joy through the Holy Spirit. And when, he, when, he comes, to, when it comes to the end of Luke's gospel, in chapter 24 and it's just coming up to the point of his ascension and he says to them he says you know to his friends he says you know you are witnesses of these things you are witnesses of things and and he says it said repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached uh, in my name in his name to all the nations in the, in the name of the son to all nations and and this is this is the gospel assignment isn't it to go to all nations with the good news of Jesus. This is, this is what my life needs to be directed towards. What, however, whatever my part in that is, I'm directed towards Jesus. Because I'm a witness. I can witness to his reality in my life. So where, whatever I'm doing, my life is directed to love on the world like Jesus. Every nation... Every nation is for God's son to forgive, to, to rub the slate clean and to draw all people to himself. That's, that's, that's my journey of travel, whatever's going on, uh, however high the seas may be that I'm, that I'm upon. And, and as, as, I kind of, as I kind of get go on this journey, as I recall my origins and I redirect my life towards Jesus in January, what was really on my heart today is to encourage you to reactivate the spirit life upon your life, to reactivate the spirit gifting in your life. And I'm going to want to talk about spiritual gifts, but more next time. But, you know, as my direction of travel is always Jesus, I, my life is physical, but it's with the Holy Spirit. It's only with the Holy Spirit that I can know the fullness of life, that I, can, that I can travel towards Jesus with power and impact and authority. Jesus gives me the authority, the Spirit brings the power. Remember, he sends his disciples out with authority in his name and with the power, the dunamis of the Holy Spirit. Have you thought about your spirit life recently? Have you thought about it in these last, in these last weeks? You see... If we don't have the spirit in us, what happens is we get into religion. We get, uh, Paul warns his, his, his spiritual son, Timothy, he warns, his, he warns him, he says, look, we, you know, we need to watch out. He said, that, he said there'll be terrible things. This is chapter three. There'll be terrible things in the last days. And there are terrible things. There are great things, but there are terrible things. And he warns him, he says, look, people will be lovers of themselves. I don't want to be a lover of myself. It's very easy for me to become a lover of myself. And he goes on to describe what the sort of things that we can love and when things are not going well. But he says, he says we can have a form of godliness, but deny its power. It's no good having a form of godliness, but denying the power of the Spirit. We need to have the power of the Spirit. We don't want to be lovers of ourselves. Jesus' people will always meet others with love in the power of the Holy Spirit. So that we're not broken 
by others, other people's brokenness. Instead, we bring love, we bring healing, we bring reconciliation, we bring a shift in the atmosphere of their lives. It's the same spirit upon us that overshadowed Mary. It's so exciting. And we have spiritual empowering upon our lives. And, um, and it, it, you know, we're, we're going to talk more about this, uh, as I said, next time. But I just love it. And, you know, if you just remember in, 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 in Corinthians, it, 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 chapter 12, it talks about the, the power of the spirit. I've got this turned up somewhere here. Yeah. Um, it says, uh, to each one, to each one, to everyone, the manifestation of the spirit is given for the common good. We don't lack we don't lack we may not be active as we should be but we we don't lack the message version for that verse is is great listen to this it says each person is given something to do that shows who god is all kinds of things are handed out by the spirit i love that each person is given something to do that shows who god is so you are and i am i've been given something to do in this life that shows who God is. What a great assignment. And it's time to reactivate these spirit gifts. It's the spirit that makes, uh, that makes this different. It's the same life, but it makes this life different. Okay, we're on the high seas. We're, we're like Noah, we're, on, we're in the ark. But Papa has not forgotten us. Far from it. We have access to all we need in Jesus. We have the spirit of work in us. He, he goes on working, so we do. And so, um, it's quite simply, we, ha- we need to go on asking for the Spirit day by day. And, you know, Jesus says this, and it's reinforced, it's in, it's in, it's in the Gospels so strongly. He says, ask, it will be given to you. Seek and you'll find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. The one who seeks, finds. The one who knocks, the door will be opened. And he goes on, he says, fathers, if your son asks you for a fish, will you give him a snake? If he asks for an egg, will you give him a scorpion instead? You wouldn't. If you then, though you are evil, and (laughs) we have darkness in us, if you then, though you are evil, know how to good gifts, to give good gifts to your child, how much more will your father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? We need to go on asking for the Holy Spirit. And I know you may have heard this before, but you know, it's just so seminal that with the Spirit, we are in this amazing partnership. We're in a holy partnership with the living God through the Spirit at work in our lives. It's a holy partnering. Every single believer on this earth is is, is made to be a partner, to go on working with Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit. And we know it's a mystery because we're, we, have the, we, have, we, we are spiritual beings, the spirits. We've been born in the spirit. Um, but we need to be go on. What this means is we need to go on being immersed in the spirit. Um, it's really wanting that filling, that, uh, that what I sometimes call the baptism, a baptism in the spirit. Without getting into the theology of it, just enjoying the fullness of the presence. And it's really that, that, that daily, daily stirring and infilling. And I know that when I pause, for me, especially at the start of the day, I'm not a very early riser. As, as uh, Sue will tell you, I can sleep for England and um, I'm afraid I'm not going to be one of those who go down in memory as getting up at, at, uh, in the middle of the night um, and not needing any sleep. I, I, I'll take my 10 hours if I can get it. But that's, you know, anyway, you don't need to know that. But um, the point is that when I start my day, <laughs> The place I need to go on my knees is to say, Lord Jesus, fill me afresh with your spirit. And when, when I ask him, his peace and his grace is renewed. I can never get to be Jesus, but I come towards him and I become more Christ-like in the spirit. Jesus says, you know, he says... I am a light to the world. Jesus says I am to let my light shine before men and women. Matthew 5, 5. Stirring up. Stirring up what the Lord has, 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 has given to me. 
to show him to the world? What has he given you that he wants you to show of him? What part of him, what, what value, what, what grace, what love of him is he calling you to show to the world? What is he wanting to activate? We read in the book, the, those who pray, those who care for the poor, those who prophesy, those who heal, those who are called to pastor, to teach. But there's also those who are meant to create, to invent, to devise, to solve, to resolve, to reconcile. It's about intentional living from the anointing. It's never about being perfect. But it's about intentionally living from the anointing and seeking increase to go on being filled because there's no lack in him there's nothing lacking in him i don't know if you saw the um film of um the uh concert that aretha franklin concert's probably the right the service that aretha, aretha franklin uh sung at in um over over the uh the, the new year's break um amazing amazing uh singer and child of god and um and uh, just uh, her voice her voice reduces um grown men and women to tears it's like heavenly and um and uh she died she died just a few years back two or three years back um but she she was uh she was not a self published artist she was very shy as a woman um I can't imagine what her life could have been like. I think it was so hard. She'd had two children by the time she was 14 years old. It wasn't perfect for her. She had disappointments. She had years in the wilderness, career-wise. Uh, she was on the wrong, wrong record label. She was, you know, she was she was being missed. And um, but but like Noah, God did not forget her. And she lived with Jesus. She, was, she, she knew her origins. And she lived towards him. And really it was when she, she really shone when she sung in worship. When her singing was towards the living God. That's when she shone. When she tried to do pop, tried to do other genres, she didn't work. But when she came back to the gospel singing... That was where she, she shone. And if you get a chance, look up her singing um, at the Kennedy Centre. Uh, when um, it was actually just, uh, she sung, um, uh, uh, um, You Make Me Feel Like a Natural Woman, um, a song written by Carol King, and it was a tribute to Carol King. And when she sings, the atmosphere shifts, and uh, President Obama and Michelle there, and, and, and they weep. And as do, as as do pretty much the whole, the whole of the community. It's incredibly moving to see the, the power of anointing at work, and it doesn't always look how we expect it to. Um, but think about you know how God, what God, has 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 planted in you to show of Him to the world, what part of Him, and. Um, I'm going to come into to land now, and um, just looking at the time. I just, I was, uh, I was, I was reading through the book of Revelation just before Christmas, and I, I love the picture of Eden being restored right in, right at the end of the book, right at the end of the Bible. My direction of travel is always back to Eden to to be with Him. And this will be how it will be. Uh, ultimately, this is where I'm journeying. It says, The angel showed me the river of the water of life, as clear as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb, down the middle of the great street of the city. On each side of the river stood the tree of life, bearing twelve crops of fruit, yielding its fruit every, every month. And the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. No longer will there be any curse. The throne of God and of the Lamb will be in the city and his servants will serve him. They will see his face 
and his name will be on their foreheads. There'll be no more night. There'll be, they, will not need, they will not need the light of the lamp or the light of the sun, for the Lord their God will give them light, and they will reign forever and ever. And that river is as clear as crystal. It's the river of the Spirit that we know in our lives. It's not, we can't see it like that, but we get glimpses. And when we're filled with the Spirit, that crystal water, of, that crystal clear water of the Spirit flows into our spirits. And we're revived and we're, we're, we're prepared and we're ready to activate the gifts of the Spirit. And to live in the direction of Jesus. And to live in his light. So let me just, as we come into to this point now, let's just, I just want to pray. Let's just pray, Father, that, 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 that together as, as a body, Lighthouse London, each person will remember that we have, a, we, have an, we have part of your purpose. We are intended by you. We remember our origins today. We thank you that you remember us, Papa. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that you remember us. We thank you, Jesus, for always being with every human being we thank you that you've always known us that you chose you chose Noah but now we live in the age where you choose each one of us as we turn to you and we declare today that we want to be disciples who follow you that you are that we we honor you as our lord and our king and our savior at the start of this year and that you are our direction of travel. And we declare that we want, Lord, to fulfill the, that purpose you put in our lives. We want, to, we want to be activated. Followers of Jesus. Active. To show God, that part of God that, you want, that, you've, that you've planted in us. So Holy Spirit, fill us. Fill us today. We pray, we just welcome your spiritual anointing, your spirit anointing. We are spirit people in the flesh. We're in part, a holy partnership. So Holy Spirit, come upon you afresh. The dunamis of the Holy Spirit, come upon you today and stir you and re- revive you and excite you and, and, and give you just a sense of his great love, heavenly love. Father, we just bless you. Be mighty in us today and be glorified. Let us shine with you this week and through this year. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. So we're going to pause there now. It's been great to be with you. Go on praying this week. Look forward to hearing some stories. Just do do send in your testimonies as the Spirit of God is working your life. Um, But have a great week um, and um, I'm going to hand back to the uh as we come into the end of the service now bless you